music, but I'm just letting y'all know I view them the same way that I view my that I expect them to view me. The question is, do they do they much, view you the same way and every other barber the same way? If you're the creme de la creme, that's the thing though. If, not, if you're the best, your your prices might be a little bit higher because you have a different skill set, an elevated skill set to the other barbers in your shop. Don't you think that they're making that choice and that decision when they spend their money with you? Because you're VIP barber, they want a VIP cut. If they're over here with with, with old Dusty next next to you, you know you're not go, they're not going to pay the same money. They're not going to get the same quality. You know what I'm saying? So you might treat all your customers the same, but do all customers you, treat all barbers the same? You know what's tripped out? You want to know what's tripped out about that? Be Madden? What I've seen some of the worst barbers who give out some of the worst haircuts get told they was the greatest barber on the planet. Every single time, they oh, never felt. I've given out a bad haircut, and I knew it was a bad haircut. And they said, "Man, you're the greatest on the planet." Mm. All of us hear it. What? Until you do something wrong to that customer, then you become the worst barber on the planet, and then they go to another barber and talk about how you suck. Well, I guess ignorance is bliss then, because if they don't know quality, <laughs> well, you hey, I'm pretty much got Sweeney says entrepreneurs are suck asses. I got you, Sweeney. <laughs> I'm Pretty just saying. All, my entire point is nah. that I value, I value <laughs> all people. I, I value you, them all. You know what I mean? We all, we all are required in this world to 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 do the job that's necessary to make the world go. All of us are appreciated. I'm not gonna say that the entrepreneur, be, and especially considering the fact that, and, and let's keep. No, nah, I ain't going down that road. We can go to somebody else. Mm, look, 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 look. Yeah. I, I understand. Oh, it's the panel on, versus on, the level, right? On a philosophical hold on, hold on, level. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Right. We're gonna circle back around. I see uh, Luis and Trev and Shan sitting around, and he chimed in a little bit. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go to Luis and then go to Trev. Yeah, I do know that the <clears throat> first entrepreneurs were merchants and uh traders right like those were the first entrepreneurs they saw a problem they saw a deficit and they inserted themselves in that problem to come up with a solution to provide a service and good for their neighbors for their family and people in their community it starts off with just a crazy idea that becomes a passion and then it grows like wildfire from there. You know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurship is the spirit of being able to do what you are passionate about and create it into a very passionate and lucrative business. Like it's it all starts somewhere. And if you think I'm lying, how often when was the last time y'all seen a uh an eight year old outside selling lemonade? And bottles of water and cookies and home and homemade snacks. That's where it starts. That's that entrepreneurship. You know, you feed that into that young boy who learns how to like, okay, we're gonna get some snacks together and we're going to sell lemonade and we're gonna sell fruit juice, right? The kid who used to go around the school selling you all the candies. All the candy bars and all of that. That's all. It all starts somewhere, and then it just grows from there from a different interest until they develop something of an interest of their own. They're always going to facilitate people that. And and you want to know something? Those people are typically not your A students. Those are not your A and B students. Those are typically like C and C minus students because they don't work or function within a space or within a structure, right? They tend to kind of need more room to kind of meander, right? Those are the type of people who are your college dropout, your high school dropout, and then they build the business and then boom, multi-millionaire or billionaire. Like all these stories happen, but we can't confine people to this one singularity idea. Nothing exists in a vacuum and, and nothing is really linear. You know what I'm saying? Design informs design and life informs life. And I think that as far as, entre as, far as entrepreneurship, 
I think it's the staple in which we teach a lot of people how to become self-sufficient and not be able to fall into this trap idea of a paycheck because it's a delusion in which allows people to throw away their dreams for a sense of, for a small slice of sense of security. All right, let me go ahead and go to Trev. I see you shaking your head, Sweeney. We got to figure out what that's all about. Go ahead, Trev. Trev, can you hear me? My bad, my bad. I was trying to get that mute button and <laughs> my other stuff was getting in the way. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of with Sweeney on this one, man, because... What? Right about now, uh, yeah, I'll tell you why. See, to me, it's like entrepreneurs right now there's so many of them it's like rappers right now right like it's, it's so many of them so who how do you know who's supposed to be the most important person he didn't say in the room he said in the spectrum so it's like i mean again anybody who i see doing something i support right i give him the respect but i don't see where you become the most important person in the room because at the end of the day there's so many of us trying to do it let's just take a poll out the panel how many people are entrepreneurs here hand, show of hands few people oh that's a yeah like okay and that's what i'm saying it's so many of us that are doing it it's like how do you know who to invest in again any way that i can show support to entrepreneurs i do i do respect it but how are you the most important when damn near all of us are trying to be entrepreneurs out here Good That's question. the rabbit hole I didn't want to go down. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me go to let me go to Hank. You mad no Hank, you know? Well, uh, my opinion on it, man. Uh, shame on you, Sweeney. Uh, to me, as far as entrepreneurs, uh, yeah, I think they should be held to a, a high standard because it gives uh, a, a positive influence amongst the young, amongst the youth. To give them something to look forward to, you know what I'm saying? Something to look up to, other than uh, maybe a, a somebody who's in uh, sports or into uh, some other entertainment. You know that that positive uh, influence that 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 uh, you could look up to and, and and do something and build something of their own and something to do to call their own. So yeah, I, I think our entrepreneurs are very important and they should be held to a higher standard, way higher than what we held uh, uh, sports figures. And entertainer, so that's just my opinion. Sweeney, you the devil. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't say so, we should hold. I didn't. I never said anything about holding entertainers and and, and ball players to uh, the most important role in the world. You ain't hear that come from me. So I never made that comparison. <laughs> all right, go ahead, B-Man. Right, so, so I have to agree with Hink on this one because. Um, I kind of want to keep this in like keep this in context of kind of what you know the whole clip was about and you know what I gathered from it was we the culture needs to hold up the entrepreneur in a in a higher status you know in the spectrum to look up to and whatnot instead of looking up to entertainers and ball players and, and, and having the youth think that's the only way they can make it. And let's just be honest, like that's really a racial thing because white folks don't don't worship their uh, entertainers the same way. You know, they 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 see the entertainment, they enjoy the entertainment, but they don't worship in the same way as it's set up in the black community. The culture is whatever is trendy, whatever is hot, whatever is a way that we can express ourselves that tends to be an entertainment heavily and that's how it's marketed as such. But you guys got to remember that the, the, the entrepreneur is just now starting to really get the voice in the community, in, in the culture um, more recently. Cause before they kept that away from us, like all the people who were making huge moves, buying up real estate, buying up, you know, apartment buildings and complexes and, you know, starting up, you know, uh, candy factories and different things like that, uh, 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 starting software companies, you don't see them on BET. You don't see them um, on the front page of the newspaper. You don't see Robert F. Smith all the time. Like he just came out 
and said, this is who I am. I'm a billionaire. You guys should know who I am. But he's been working in secret or in, in, in the background for years, for decades. Um, why are we just not hearing about him? You know, so yes, I believe we should put more of a spotlight on entrepreneurs in general. But I mean, you know, Trev was talking about there's so many, there's so many, you know, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. And right now it's a trendy thing right now. It is being trendy simply because we're on the internet right now and the way, you know, money is being made is different. So everybody wants to get on a podcast. Everyone wants to get in front of a camera. Everyone wants to, you know, drop ship a product. Everyone wants to uh, uh, print their own t-shirts and that kind of stuff. Like that will never go away. There shall always be, there's always going to be a lemonade stand. 